Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is adding right angle vectors. Here's the question we wish to answer. How can you use Pythagorean theorem and trigonometric functions to determine the vector sum of two or more right angle vectors? Let's get started. To add right angle vectors, you need to understand the basic method of adding any vectors, whether they be at right angles or not. And that brings us to a quick review of the head to tail addition of vectors. Here we see vectors b, g, and v, and we wish to add them to determine the resultant. When we do, we add them like this. First we draw vector b, and where the arrowhead of b ends, we begin vector g. And where the arrowhead of g ends, we begin vector v. Once all three vectors have been added in this tip to tail or head to tail fashion, we can draw the resultant from the tail of vector b to the arrowhead of vector v. So understanding the head to tail method of vector addition preps you for understanding what's so special about adding right angle vectors. We'll use this example to illustrate. Vector A is 5 kilometers east and B is 2.5 kilometers north. So first we would draw A and then we would add B with its tail sitting at the arrowhead of A. And then we would draw the resultant from the tail of the first vector, A, to the arrowhead of the last vector, B. And once we do, you notice that this resultant is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And because it is, we can apply right triangle mathematics to determine its magnitude and its direction. As for its magnitude, we would use the Pythagorean theorem to determine it. Pythagorean theorem says that if you were to add vectors a and b at right angles, then vector c can be found by applying a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the resultant. Applying it to this example, r squared, the resultant squared, is 5 squared plus 2.5 squared. Using my calculator, that comes to 31.25 kilometers squared. To determine r, you'd take the square root of both sides. So r would be the square root of 31.25. That comes to 5.5901 dot dot dot, or rounded, that becomes 5.6 kilometers. To determine the direction of a resultant, you need to be able to use the sine, cosine, and tangent functions. These three functions relate the length of the sides of a right triangle to the angles within the right triangle. Here in the diagram, you see angle theta defined in the bottom right corner. The side opposite theta is the vertical side here, and the side adjacent is the horizontal side of this right triangle. It's called adjacent because it's the one side along with the hypotenuse that make up this angle theta. And the opposite is called opposite because it's the side that's opposite the angle theta we're referring to. Of course, the hypotenuse is the long side of the right triangle. Here's how we define sine, cosine, and tangent. The sine of the angle is the ratio of two side lengths, the opposite side, to the hypotenuse side length. The cosine is the ratio of the length of the adjacent to the length of the hypotenuse side, and the tangent is the ratio of the length of the opposite side to the adjacent side. We can remember this by the mnemonic so ka toa. We will use this understanding of trigonometric functions to determine the direction of the resultant for this problem that we've been working on. You see in the diagram 5 kilometers east and 2.5 kilometers north added, and you see the resultant there. We want to determine the direction of the resultant, that is, the counterclockwise angle of rotation from east. So we define theta as the angle between the red resultant vector and east, and then we use the tangent function to determine its value. I use tangent because I know the length of the sides opposite and adjacent to theta. And so I begin by saying the tangent of theta equal opposite over adjacent, and I substitute in my known values of the opposite side length and the adjacent side length. The ratio of these two lengths is 0 0.50, so I'm looking for what angle theta has as its tangent value 0 0.50. To do that on my calculator, I use the inverse tangent or tangent minus 1 button. The inverse tangent of 0 0.50 is 26.56505, which rounds to 27 degrees. So I say the direction of this resultant vector is 27 degrees north of east or counterclockwise from east. 
One thing that you'll have to be careful of is that the angle theta within the triangle is not necessarily the direction. This is particularly true for resultant vectors that are pointing into the second, third, or fourth quadrant, like this one, which points into the second quadrant. The red vector here has an angle theta measured with the northward vector. And so when we find theta using SOHCAHTOA, we end up with 27 degrees. And I could describe this resultant as having a direction 27 degrees west of north, or 117 degrees counterclockwise from east. Here's a second example for a vector pointing into the fourth quadrant. The angle theta measured here is the angle between the southern vector and our resultant. When I go to calculate it, it's once more 27 degrees. So this resultant would have a direction that is 27 degrees east of south, or 297 degrees counterclockwise from east. I know 297 degrees because the southerly vector is at 270, and this ve red vector heads 27 degrees further counterclockwise from the southern vector. So I add 27 to 270. And here's the final example for a vector pointing into the third quadrant. Theta again is 27 degrees, which means the vector resultant vector has a direction 27 degrees south of west or 270 degrees counterclockwise from west. That is, the 207 degrees counterclockwise from east is 27 degrees further rotated from the westerly vector. The question typically arises, what would you have to do if you have to add three or more right angle vectors? Like here, in which I have to add vectors A plus B plus C. They would add head to tail, as shown in this diagram. But since the order in which you add vectors does not matter, I could just as easily add A plus C plus B, as shown in the diagram on the right. This would give me a resultant shown in blue, and that resultant happens to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle that has as its horizontal side a length of 13 and its vertical side a length of 5. So to determine the magnitude of this resultant, I use the Pythagorean theorem as shown. I say resultant squared equal 13 squared plus 5 squared, and that comes out to be approximately 14 kilometers. To determine the direction of this resultant vector, I have to apply the tangent function. The tangent of the angle theta would be the side opposite divided by the side adjacent, which would be 5 divided by 13. If the tangent of theta is equal to 5 divided by 13, then theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the ratio of 5 divided by 13, and that comes out to be 21 degrees. So the direction of my resultant is 21 degrees north of east, or 21 degrees counterclockwise from east. I have a quick trick for you for when you have to add three or more right angle vectors, like here where we have to add these five vectors. The trick involves consolidating all of the north-south vectors and all of the east-west vectors into two vectors. Like here, you'll notice that there's three east-west vectors and two north-south vectors. I can add them together, particularly if I give all the west vectors a negative and the south vectors a negative. They would add together something like this. The result, you see, is 10 kilometers east and 3 kilometers south. Now what I have to do is just add these two consolidated vectors together and determine the resultant of 10 kilometers east plus 3 kilometers south. Now that's a quick trick. Let's now apply this quick trick to the situation where a student is walking through the hallway and makes the following five movements. We want to determine the overall magnitude and direction of the resultant. So I'm going to consolidate the two east-west vectors and the three north-south vectors, and the consolidate is shown. The two west vectors add to 60 meters west, and the two south and one north vector adds to 13 meters south. So my next step now is to draw a right triangle with sides 13 meters south in 60 meters west, and to determine the resultant of this right triangle. It's a hypotenuse of right triangle, and so I can do business as usual to determine the magnitude and direction. The magnitude is determined with Pythagorean theorem, and comes out to be approximately 61 meters, and the direction is found using the tangent function, where I say the tangent of theta 
is equal to the ratio of the side 60 to the side 13. That comes out to be approximately 78 degrees. Now once I find theta, I have to make it into a direction. If you notice in the triangle, the theta is the angle between south in this southwest vector. So I could say that the direction is 78 degrees west of south, or measured counterclockwise from east, it's 192 degrees counterclockwise from east. I get this 192 degrees knowing that south is 270 degrees, and I have to backtrack towards the vector by an amount 78 degrees from the 270. So subtracting 78 from 270 gives me this 192 degrees counterclockwise from east. The examples that you've seen in this video demonstrate how to use the Pythagorean theorem and trigonometric functions to add two or more right angle vectors. So at this time in every video, I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for helping make this learning stick. But before I help you out with that action plan, could you help us out? If you like the video, you can press the like button and maybe even subscribe to the channel click on the bell and get notifications when new videos come out. And if you have a question or comment, we'd be glad, to see, glad for you to leave it in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. The first suggestion is to try the Minds on Physics apps. When you download it to your phone or tablet, you'll notice that there's a Vectors and Projectiles module, and you could try any of the missions VP2 through VP4. Great follow-up to this video. Or you could try a concept builder at our website. For instance, the head-to-tail method of vector addition would be a good review of that important method of adding vectors. Or you could even try one of our interactives in the physics interactive section of our website. We recommend vector addition. Finally, we have a tutorial at our website, a written tutorial that provides a quick refresher of some of the concepts we've discussed in this video. You'll find links to all four of these resources in the description section below this video. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck.